Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. A number of you have asked about pickup beds, uh, doing the floors and whatnot in them. I got one here now, got holes in the bed. So uh, we got to turn around and make a panel to replace that section there. We want to make one using a homemade metal break and basic tools. Stick around. Okay, in the last video, how to make factory seams from rusty metal, I covered uh, repairing this section here, so if you want to check that out, link will be in the description below. Uh, I went ahead and I finished up the rest of the outside of the box on this truck. I've done the same thing back here. I had to do a lap joint back here and repair this here. This was all rusty along here. Put a strip in here and a piece in here. And then I went ahead then and I went and uh, done the same on this side. Okay. Done the repairs here, repaired the, the lip here. This is the only one that was any good. I just cleaned it up and it was in good shape. So I left alone, had some holes well up here. So as of right now, I turn around and I got the box sides completed. Uh, there was about, I don't know, 25 holes or more on the top of this box. I don't know what, whoever had, must have had about 25 caps on it. <laughs> or rails or something, because there was a lot of holes drilled in it. But anyway, I got the two sides of the box done on both sides here now. And uh, I'm getting ready now to uh, do another one, but I want to show you that uh, a lot of you ask about them. So that is done. Some may have asked uh, about how much time I have into that. That two sides of the box here now is, uh, I'd say, pretty well 30 hours. Um, we cannot get this truck here. This is the only one I know of, this on the island. People are saying they can probably get me one here, ship me one here, or whatnot. Uh, yeah. But I'm willing to say that all this is rusty. It's got surface rust and everything in it. There's holes in it. It's very hard to find one of these trucks that are not rusty. And when you do, you'll be paying good money for it. So I got a couple of smaller things that I got to do with it. But that's not what we're here for now. A lot of you have asked about these. Repairing floors of boxes. Well, here you go. This one here has sections in here. She's gone up here. She was gone in here where the lip was too. And like I have to chop it off so you can see where it was rusted out. I got to go back into there with it. And she was gone in here. Now this is a panel that comes down here and goes across here. It goes on over top of this. Luckily for us, the center section of the floor is in really good shape. Okay, this is really good. This has got some minor rust here. It's got a hole just drilled in here for some reason. But all this, all this here is solid. The floor on this box is in really good shape. Over here, more the same. You can see the holes. Everything has gone along here. I got some repairs to do here on, the, on some of these here. Over here, you can see it better. You can see where the lip is gone, so I'll have to do some repairs on that. Up here, you can see they already start cutting stuff out of it, but you can see that it was gone along here and in the corners and stuff like that. And of course, then this is the only one I'd ever replaced, so I got to clean that up in there and get that ready for repairs. And over here, uh, it was gone along there. And it's got a couple of small spots up here. This is probably the better of, of, of them. But she is very, very rough in spots. And of course, in there was really bad. You can see this bad along there. The, uh, you can also see, showing you there now, the inside, the way the boxes were finished. The way the repairs were done. Okay. You see where I replaced the inner lip here. On both sides. Let's see. And I put the factory seam back there. That's just a lap joint. I covered that in the video on Krusty. I done a similar type of join like that on Krusty. But I had to repair that because that was all rusted out. But anyway, we're into this here now. What we got to do now is we got to uh, make this thing here. All I'm concerned about now, first of all, is find the size of it. And then we'll go from there. Now the first thing we got to do is we got to take measurements of this here. So right off the bat, you'll just probably turn around and turn around and say, okay, we'll go there. So that's 23 and a half. To there, and then when you measure from out there to there, you come up with 12 and a half inches. But we gotta realize that there's bends in this here. So this is where this comes in handy. It all seems just tape. Of course, I'm going to do this standard. My tape has metric, metric and standard on it. I'm old school, I like to say standard. But I'm gonna start in here and start at zero and just come out and walk along the actual lip. 
and follow it right along here. Now according to that there, that's 14 inches, okay? That's 14 inches there, and we measured this here, that was 12 and a half. So we got another inch and a half with a bends in it. So we got 14 inches, I'm gonna go an even 15, give us a lot of room here, right? So I'll go 15, 15 inches, by say 24. Okay, I got the piece of metal cut out. I got it all stripped down, cleaned up on both sides. I uh, can't say that enough, clean up your metal, sand your metal, prep your metal before uh, you do any type of work or anything on the go. Now, here's the thing, I got a piece here that was cut out of it. This is the rib and all that type stuff that I got to do. Now the problem I got is I got to duplicate that bin there. This is basically the one full one here. And so I got to find some way that I can turn around and transfer this onto this here to make the panel work. What I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use this piece of metal to make a jig for a template to uh, so I can scribe it out on either end of it and have points that I can mark it, mark it all up. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to cut out a section of this here to use for a guide. Uh, this metal here is uh, 18 gauge metal and this metal here that I'm putting back in it is 18 gauge metal. It's strange. This is a four pan out of this Toyota, which is uh, amazing. Of course, uh, if it was 24 gauge, there'd be nothing left to the pan. I can guarantee you that. But uh, it's good that uh, it's made out of thick metal, so it's easy, uh, it's nice and strong. So. so here it is. I went and took a piece, cut a piece out of the middle of it, and then I cleaned it all up. Okay? So there's my uh, the piece of what the shape that I'm looking to have. Now, when you flip it up on its end, and you look straight down at it, you can see, actually see the cornered edges. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the grinder and I'm going to slice right down through the corner edges, right here, down probably a quarter of an inch or so. I'm going to put marks in them and cut them straight down through there to give me uh, points of reference. Here's all I went and did, is I cut slots right out of rolled edges, all the way down through here, just cut a slot down through here, slot, 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 like that. So now I have all the cornered edges marked out a word or two. Now I've noticed by taking measurements that this one here is different than this one here. Uh, the actual width of it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate this one here now because I'm going to go off of this one here. This is going to be my measurement. I'm going to go off of and you can see I cut the end off of here so that's the width of the bottom and the width of the bottom there. So what I'm probably going to end up doing here now is I'm going to end up cutting this right on down through here somewhere just to eliminate this one here and just use this one. I was hoping to use two but after measuring this here and measuring this here, this is a little bit different because there must have been like an outside edge or something like that and it changes up a bit and I'm trying to keep both of them the same. So now that I got this done, all I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten this out. I'm going to take the hammer out and flatten all this out. So here's all I got I've done now. i flattened it out. That's the flat piece. Now you can see there's notches cut in that there all along there. There are my reference points. There are my measurements. And like I said earlier, I went and turned around and this one here and hang on now this is the top here doo, doo, doo. that's the bottom that's the top there and that's the top there the problem i had was that one this top over here was smaller and uh, when i measured it up the inside here is a little bit different so i'm just going to cut this off here and just use these three over here so i can just duplicate it off of this one here there's probably easier ways of doing this i'm just going along now as i'm going and i'm, I'm just trying to find some way that i can keep this accurately the same the problem you're having when bending this stuff up here is when you start chasing the panel across here starts making bends uh what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up start moving things things are going to change and i'm trying to play around here and see if i can get an accurate reading of how i can actually do this with um, a measurement that i can actually uh, keep it consistent right across the thing when i puts it into the brake so all i'm going to do here now is i'm going to clamp this on here and you got an arrow pointed here, and I'm always going to have this to this side here, the panel. So what I'll do is I'll mark the panel here. This will be this side here, and this side here. And that's where I'll start from. So when I get over here, I'll just flip it upside down and put it over there and start from that side. So it'll be the same. And uh, all I'll do now is I'll go along here, and, and I'm going to clamp this in place here. And first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to scribe that and see if it works. Because I think if I start, I was going to take the grinder and start grinding through this. 
but I figured by the time I got the whole thing done I'll have these here all opened up so I'm going to try scribing these lines now and see what it looks like now here you can see all I did is I laid this onto this here and I went across and I marked all the lines and you can see like I got the bottom of the uh, the B and the top of the B marked on these here so and there would be the sides there and all I did is I went along here I started over on this end here and I lined it up and I just turn around and lay that against that there and line that up there and then I scribed in between these here put marks on them you can see the scribe line here okay I scribed all this is an old screwdriver that I just sharpened the end of it to scribe the line the problem I'm having is because when you put this in the brake you got to know both sides of it you got to flip this over constantly this piece of metal so I need to put markers on this here that I can use for reference points when it's upside down as well and you can you can hold you can center punch these and then go around the other side and draw scribe lines but I figure it's by grinding these here like this here now you can see what I went and did then is I went back then and I grinded all the lines all right so now I got a mark all I did is like when I laid this in place here and I scribed that I knew that this is the bottom here and this is the bottom here so then I just come over here and I laid this here and then I went and marked it again. This is the bottom here. This is the bottom here. So I come over here and I lay that there like so and, and so on and so on. And scribe it each time. Then now I'm going to go back and I'm going to cut all these here just a little bit like where I got it done marked. And the reason for that. Reasoning for that is now that I flip it over, the marks are on this side as well. So then I got reference points to go by when I go to put it in the break the bend. It's a lot of work because I'm trying to make this consistent beads right across. Because the problem you got when you start scribing lines and then transferring to the other side and uh, bending your bends is that you end up uh, sometimes not being perfectly aligned on the bottom side. Even when you center punch them, it runs into issues. And by putting a scribe line, this marks it this way here, now these little notches, I'll have something to actually go by on both sides. And so I can just constantly flip it over and line it up in the, in the, the break here and bend it. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to scribe these here. I made sure I just had just enough for the amount of beads. you got to realize that when you go over here, I've only got four beads, right? And i got five lower sections. Then there's a big wide section on the inside, so i got to make sure I leave that alone there. And this outside one is the same width as this in here. So I started off with an outside bead, and then come in and then made all these here as I was going. So I'm going to go ahead and mark these here, right? Then, as you can see, I started here, on this side here, and I marked it. So now I'll go up here, and this is the way this is on this side here, and all I'll do is I'll flip this over this way, and lay that there like so, and mark it. You can see that I got this notched out on the end, because that's also the edge there. So this is an actual, the exact same width as this one here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to notch these here now as I'm going, finish this off here, and then I'm going to go over here and do the same over here. Okay, I went ahead and I did the other side. I started from this end here, done the same thing again. I marked it, went around and I cut the splots and I moved that over to here and I laid that in there and repeated the process going across so they all look the same. See, and just went on and I cut it over to here, got the notches and everything put in it. So now I got notches on both ends. Right? Now remember, this panel is longer than it needs to be. So the reason for these here are these are just basically cuts that I can use for alignment purposes because now I got them on both sides as you can see I can use them there now for alignment purposes I'll clean them up a bit now uh, 
I played around, I got the piece of steel here. I got this piece here, and I cut a small section of it off to play around with the angles. The angle here is the same as the angle here. So all these angles are the same all along. So it's always the exact same bend every single time. It's just in reverse order. So what I went and did then, as I cut a piece out, and I come over here in the brake, and I set it up in the brake on the angle. So then I brought it up to where it brings up in it, and I put a pair of vice grips here as a stop, and a pair of vice grips over there as a stop. So now I'm gonna make the same bend every single time. That'll come up there and it'll stop. Now there is some spring back, so what I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna knock that up a small bit, because there will be some spring back on it. So I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna start bending all this up in the panels, and I'm gonna start from the short end, because this is the inside here. This will go out by the, um, the quarter panel, and I'll start in here and make my bend here and start doing all my bends from there. So here we are, I got the piece put in the vise, or in the, in the brake. And you can see the marks that I got here going along here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to line that up in the center of that. Every time I'm going to put it in the center of the, the piece of metal there, in the cut, come over here and do the same, put it in the center of the cut there. And that's where it'll be my point every time that I'll make my bend. So that way I'm trying to keep it as consistent as possible. Like I said, I got them put in the middle of both of them bends. Now I got my bend, my piece of metal here with the angle on it, so I'm gonna do my first bend and check it, see what it's like. I'll just loosen this up here, pull this out. Lay this in place. That bend don't look that bad. Nope, needs to come up more. So I'll adjust that. I'll bend this up a little bit more. The voice grips are not that tight that they won't move. So I'll bring it up a bit more. There we go. I'm just making do with what I got around with the tools that I got. There's probably a better way to do this. But I'm doing this now with the tools I have. That's much better. Now it's gonna roll back on me every time I flip it over, but I'm gonna keep continuously doing it this way. So that was my first bend. So now, each one is gonna be a bend. Every second one I think is gonna be a bend opposite the other one. But it'll always be the same bend. Stop that one. Yeah. See now, there's an issue I'm running into now that I'm thinking about. Is um, this bend here? It's it's on this right angle it's supposed to be on, but because of this piece here, it's going to throw off my mechanism here. As you can see, it brings up here. So what I'm noticing here now is this got to be level. So now that I know that this is level, that angle should be this angle here. Take this out, lays that there. We got that angle there. So now the next one is going to bend downwards. This one's going to have to be on this angle here because it's flat again. Fine. Flip it over. And this one here is going to come up level. Let's 
take that over on the bench and see what it looks like. So there it is, the bead put in it. You see it on the end, the way it's shaped. So now all I'm going to do is I have the original bead here and I'll lay that over the top of it. And as you can see, that's pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay. So now I'm going to go back over in the break and I'm going to continue on and just break all these. I'm going to start keep going from this end here and just work my way across. Now you see why I got the cuts for them because it's a lot easier to, do, to line it up in the break with the cuts than it is to try to do like pencil marks or a marker would be horrible because you'd end up with a marker, you'd have the thickness of the marker line. So you can put it on this side of the marker over here and on the other side you can put it on that side and then it'll just and then it'll just multiply itself as it goes across. This is just a simple little homemade break. I got a video on it. You want to check it out on my channel of how I made it. Um, I'm not one for big, expensive, fancy tools. I don't know how many of you that uh, plasma cutter on the floor that when I walked across the shop that time, I finally picked up one <laughs> plasma cutter. Uh, move into the times. It's good to have for cotton and stuff like that. So, what I enjoy trying to make do with what I got around always had to be that way. We never had. I, I searched for a lot of the big tools, the big English wheels, planishing hammers. I heard that the Navy crowd back in the 60s that had it all here on the, on the, the American bases and stuff like that. And uh, they are around here, but they're extremely rare. And uh, even the big eight foot brakes. And as years went by, I started sizing things up. It's nice to have that equipment. Um, you need a garage, 24 by 24, just for equipment, just to put brakes, English wheels, Plymouth and cameras, you just need a building that big just for that alone. And we, let's face it, we all don't have big garages. Well, it's nice to have everything portable. And small, that's the reason why this one's only a five foot break. Um, I chose the length of this for the simple fact that the door bottom on a, like a 70s Caprice, two door Caprice, is a little more than four feet long on the bottom, so it will fit in this, the door skin. I really have no real need to want to do a box of a truck, 
And if I do, I just go to a local sheet metal shop and have them bend it up. Because uh, I've only had made a few of them over the years. And it's not the, I don't justify having a big eight foot break in the way all the time for that particular reason. Like you could use this same process if you want to repair a patch panel in the floor of your truck. Sometimes I've just taken the complete uh, the beds out of newer trucks and just cut the bottom out of them and weld them in older trucks, replace them. But sometimes the beads are never the same and you probably only have one or two small spots on your project. So this is how you go about doing it. So there you have it, all bent up, it's nice and straight, flat across. You can see now how I used all them little cuts, the, uh, that's where I made all the marks to for each individual bend and I put it right in the middle of it so the bends were always consistently in the same locations. That's the reason why you got a consistent look there. Uh, like when you lay this in place there now, that works out pretty good there. You can see the consistency of it. And there's nothing, nothing crazy. Now, to move on from there, here's the next dilemma we got. Okay, this comes back on an angle, okay, and then it goes flat. So now we've got to work on getting this all straightened away. So all I'm going to do first is I want to get these angles right. So I'm going to measure from the bottom point here back to here to see how far back it is. And I'm going to draw a straight line right across the panel so I can just chop that right off like that on the bottom side of it. So here's the first thing I did is I took a measurement from here to here. That would be the bottom of it to the top of it. And that'll basically be the same as much of it was straight up like that. And then I just come over here and I laid it on the edge here. I brought it in and I marked it there. And then I marked it over on this one here. And then I took the ruler and marked it on there, drew a straight line. So now I got them points. Now I gotta go from this point here to fade out to here. So I gotta go ahead now and I gotta draw all these out. To draw that out there to fade that out from there. All I did is I got one of them little protractor sets from school that we all had. I can tell you how old that is. They come over on those on the arc that did. So and I just used that for straight edge and lined it up there, like so, from the bottom edge corner here up to the marker line, and I put that there and I marked it. And I went on and done all the rest of them. So now I got it all marked out. Now I'm gonna take the grinder and I'm gonna cut all these sections out. Everything there that's marked. So there the air now with all the pieces cut out of this. So I cut out of it there. So you can see you can cut at an angle there. It's nice and tidy. Some might say, well, why don't you just flatten this out and you know squish this back down? The problem with this is that this all metal here now is after coming together more because we've after bend it. This is shorter here now. Uh, the measurement that I had before, I think it was 16 inches or whatever, now this is down to like 13. So, because of all these bends. So, I try not to do anything with this. You're wondering about this one inch lip. All I'm going to do is that one. I'm going to weld the lip onto that there. And dress it all up, grind it all up. But, that, I'm going to cap these ends and bring it down so they're all level here. And I'm using this piece here. I'm going to cut out little pieces now that'll fit in there and mark them. And then I'll go ahead and I'll fit them in there and I'll weld them in, grind them and dress them, finish them off like I've always said before, do one at a time, one panel at a time. Don't worry about trying to do this all in one piece. And I went ahead and I marked it on the back side and I cut it out of the piece of steel there and I just trimmed it off and cut it off. And now that I got that fitting in there, that's where that'll go, like so. That's where that'll go and I can weld it on there. I got this clamped to the table to keep this nice and flat and straight. And all I'll do now is I'll go over here and I'll use this one as a template. And I'll just go over and I'll mark these here and I'll cut out three more of them. 
So now I've got four cut out. Now it's just a matter of going over here now and fitting them in place and tacking them in and weld them in, each one. And I'm going to keep that clamp down on the table. You've got to keep that flat because uh, what's going to happen when you start welding this here, this is going to want to draw up or down. And if you keep it flat on the table like so, it'll actually, the heat will actually keep it straight. So that's the whole point behind it. So you got to take your time, still got to do the cooling method. You just can't go welding this up. Uh, too much heat, this will want to draw like you wouldn't believe. So it'll uh, actually heat up a lot. So just take your time welding it in. Yeah, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back, take my time, cool it off. Uh, weld so much, cool it off, weld so much, cool it off. And uh, then I'm going to weld it on the inside and then dress it on the outside. Went ahead, welded them on the inside, welded them on the outside. Now I'm going to start grinding all them off. First thing I did is I grind all the face of it flat. Just took the grinder like that and grinded it all flat here. So it was all flush going in along here. Then I come over here and then I grind at the sides. This way, top flat, the other side this way. So I was left with a sharp edge along the top and along the sides. Like so, so then you got a nice little shape to it, you can see it. Then all I did in is I just rounded off the edge of it. And that's all it is to it. Three stages of it. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and I'll finish dressing all it up. Now, we're up to the point now where I got it all dressed up. And I got to add a piece on the inside here. Now this side here is only about a quarter of an inch wide, you can see it. I could probably leave it alone and not even put it in there. But I want to put it in there because I want to have this little edge here going along here. So I don't have it open up on the end of it and I can weld a flat piece on it. The other side's a bit longer and uh, the ends are a bit different. Okay. But you can see here now I got it all dressed up. All that's ready to go. So all I got done is I took an old scrap piece of steel I had there. A piece of uh, an edge of one of the metals that I got there and it had a nice straight edge on it. So all I'm going to do now, and then I'm going to cut running off it, I'm just going to lay that across there, and I'm going to weld that right on there. Nothing fancy. Stuck off too long. Whole piece is still there. Still got the angle on the bottom of it. That helps keep it straight. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to weld all this up. I went ahead then, welded them on the inside. I got it all welded on the outside. Now I'm going to sit down and I'm going to grind dress this up. I'm not going to cut on this off yet because i got to still trim it all up. But it's a lot easier to work with this piece of metal here now with a little bit of angle on it because it keeps strength to it all. And uh, I'll trim all that up after the fact. All I'm going to be worried about now is getting these welds up here looking good. So this is all nice and flat here. And then I'll clean up the bottom enough so that it, uh, it fits in there nice. Here it is all grinded up. All in between it and everything. Look at it all nice and smooth and through there. And then I grind up the back side of it so it all fit in there flush. So, in there. so now I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to trim this off here. Trim this off here. I talked about this before uh, in an earlier video about when you're butt welding two pieces together like this. It's always nicer to leave it a little bit long so this inside corner is easy to weld. Because if you have two of these the same length, when you start welding here, you're going to burn away this corner. At least now you've got somewhere to run your, your weld off into it. So when you cut this off, you've got a nice clean edge there. I'm going to go ahead now trim this off. I'm going to come back to about here and then trim this off this way here. Just leave the lifter. Here it is. All cut off. Seems to be a lot of work to do something. But uh, I'd say uh, probably 30 minutes uh, making all this up. This whole section here now, I'm probably adding an hour. And uh, you know, if you're if you got something that you can't buy panels for, uh, and you know, you need something like this here made up, it's the only way to do it. Like some people were saying, well, it's a lot of work to put into that. Yeah, it is a lot of work, but uh, look at the outcome you're coming up with. And you did it yourself with basic tools. Now, you see the distance that this was on this one here, okay? Now, up here, this one's even shorter, it's probably like an inch or more. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark from here, okay. Take the end of it where it's going to be, and measure from here to here, and I'm going to cut off my panel right along here, so it's like this, so then all I got to do is taper back the edges, like I got done on this here, and then I'll just add a lip onto it like I got done there. Twenty-two. 
two and five eighths. Is all of it indeed? I marked it up, 22 and 5 eighths, because that's the distance where that bead ends on the bottom of the bead here, not on the top, but on the bottom, because I still got to add lip on this after the fact. So I'm going to cut this off here now, and then I'm going to measure back here, and then do the same thing as I did before, mark it across here, cut it on an angle, cut it on an angle. This one here is a little bit shorter than the other one, so I measure it off it, and I come back to that measurement here, and I'm going to cut it on an angle, make up little pieces there now, and weld them in there. So there it is, I got the ends all cut out, with the caps welded in, I went ahead then, welded them inside as well, so now all I got left to do now is to grind them off and dress them up, and I got this piece here, and I'm going to do the same thing as the other side, I'm just going to clean up that edge there, I'm going to lay that there like so, and I'm going to weld it on there because it needs a longer piece on this side. Now I went ahead, dressed all them up, got them all dressed up. And then I clean up the piece of metal here, and I turn around now and I'm going to install that there, like so, and just weld it on there. A little bit longer, not worried about it, I'm just going to make sure that it's all lined up and flush. Here it is, all grinded up, all the ends are all dressed up, running through it all. It over, and I grind all this flat here. If you want to, you can get in here, take a dial, uh, dial grinder, clean all that up if you want. But there's bracing that goes over this here on both ends, so I'm not too concerned about it. It's just more time going to take up for me to get it done. So all I'm going to do here now is I'm going to trim off these, get these marked off, and then I'm going to measure the distance from here to here on the truck and then cut it off there. Now I went ahead and I measured off on the truck and I measured it up to here and marked it off to the proper length that it is on the truck and I turned around and I cut it off, cut the piece off it. So now I got the length right. Now what I need to find now is the distance from here to here and here to here, okay? Now what I did with the measuring tape is I noticed this, that when I measure over here that's 12 and a quarter inches up there in this end it's 12 and three quarters of an inch so there's a half an inch difference in the setback here going across here so I gotta make sure that I put it on the right end up on that end there when I cut it off so it's not a straight cut up through there so the box gets wider as it gets up there from that setup right so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna make the measurements now transfer them over onto this here Mark it and cut it off. So I went ahead and I trimmed up the side over here. I cut it off and it's basically a half an inch in the difference between here and here because there's a taper. Hard to see with the camera, but uh, there is a taper there. And then you just take it over here for a quick little test fit in the place where it got to go. That's got to go in there in the corner. There it is. You see, it come down here. Pull that down. Lines up pretty good there, comes up along there, even overlaps the same as the old one did. It goes inside, flush to the panel, that'll be spot welded in along there, and along there. So I got the panel made, now I gotta sit down here, I gotta remove all this here. So all I'm gonna do now is that there's a frame going through here, and a frame going through here. So I'm gonna cut it off on either side of that there, close down here and cut it off. 
and just start removing the pieces out in chunks. Um, you might, you know, like some people might sit down and want to clean up spot wells. No, I'm not bothered with that. I'm, I don't want to go drilling out no spot wells on this here. I just want to start cleaning everything up and uh, taking up one piece at a time. So get the big chunky stuff out of the way first so I can get down to the smaller areas. This is all ever done when it comes to replacing panels. Uh, I'll cut everything out of the way that is easy to get at. Cut the large sections out, get them out of the way so that I, I can see where all the spot welds are to and I'll start working my way around breaking off spot welds. These here you should get with an air chisel because it's a heavy frame. There seems to be spot welds right on these edges here. There's one bolt there, I don't know why. But uh, so it's just a matter of me breaking them off there to remove that piece. Back on this end here, it's part of the box so I have to take my time and by hand now tap these up fine each, in, each individual one. And see here, I found one right here. And all it is, I cut around it. I left the spot well there. And that's what I'll do to remove all this up. I'll just find out where the spot wells to, cut around it, and move on. So I'll get the bulk of it out of the way. So all I'm left with is this type of stuff, one piece at a time. All I've ever done is just cut them off. And I just took a chisel here. All I did is I took the chisel, found the spot, pried it up. And then pry it up, you can see where the spot ones are to. And I'll move up here. Do the same thing. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this part. I'll look it on, then I'll come back and I'll clean them up, just grind them off, I'll turn them off a bit better, and I'll clean them up, and I'll just continue on. And then after I went back and I trimmed up around the spot welds, as you can see here, right, and I just cut off the sections of them around them, so I can get just to the spot welds, so all that's left is where the spot welds are too, right. Now I'll go back and I'll grind all that up. Just knock the head off of that and that'll be clean. I have no holes that I gotta worry about, spot welds, and then I can go back and do the repairs. I got some repairs that I gotta do up here, repairs I gotta do here, and even got repairs to do here. So I can do all that before I can put the pan in. Well, I got everything cleaned up and I got a fit in place. That's where it's gotta be. You can see up here I had to trim off some rust and everything up here. Let's see what I got here. I got it all cleaned out. Uh, I had to cut a piece out of here. And I cut a piece out of here. And then up here on this cross brace, and I haven't cut the entire end out of this here. This looks to be about 14 gauge. This here is about 18 gauge. And of course, this here is about 22 gauge. So, uh, and down here, this here is best kind, this one here. And all this down here is in good shape, right? So basically, what I got to do now is I got to start making pieces to go in here. And here, all I'm going to do is cut them, cut them to lint. And I'm going to fit them in there. not going to worry about trimming them up, making them perfect. I'll trim that off after the fact. I'm gonna go ahead now, make up the pieces and weld them in place there. I'm gonna use 18 gauge on them there and weld them sections in there. Up here, I'm gonna make a bit of section up here that'll go and then another one in here that'll come down around here because this is supposed to come to about here somewhere because that's supposed to overlap. But I'll first make this one up here and finish that off and I'll make that out of 14 gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start making up these pieces. What I'll do is when I get some welded in place, I'll show you. So all I did is I cut out pieces the right length and I just welded them in, wasn't worried about how wide they were, they're too wide and on an angle. I just wanted to get this straightened away because I'm going to grind and dress this first and then I'm going to draw a line along there and cut that off. Same one up here, did the same thing here again. Done that with the uh, 18 gauge and I'm just going to cut it off after the facts after I grinds it. And up here I used 14 gauge on that there, done the same thing, cut out a piece to length and just welded it on. Nothing fancy. So now I'm just going to turn around and grind all this up, finish it off and I can trim all them up. So it looks good. Quick little trick for cutting straight edges. You can see I got the excess over here. I got a piece of scrap steel that's got a good edge on it, on the edge of it there. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the grinder now and ride it right along the sides of this here. Cut that off flush there. I cut that off flush there. That way you haven't got to worry about you know, just driving the line and doing this type of thing going down the line. I'll use this piece of metal as a guide. Try and I'll let off flush.
So I got that cut off, that cut off, and that cut off. Did the same thing up here. Use straight piece steel, laid it on there, rolled the grinder along it, cut it off. So now I got all them ready, and all them are done. Didn't take very long to do either. I'm gonna go up here now and I'll make a piece here first, it'll come down. I marked where the panel ends, so I want it to come down about here. And I'll make a piece now, and put it in here, and have it come down here, and I'm gonna make up a second piece to go along here. I ended up, went up and I cut, and I had to cut a bit more out of it. I found another week back, so I cut more of the piece out of it. And then I went ahead and I cut a piece out that would fit up in there. I have a bit of scrap steel, and that'll fit there like so. Uh, some may wonder why I haven't gone on and made this piece as well. Uh, you're talking about two different planes there, trying to make that fit perfect, marking it all out, trying to get it just so. Um, I'm doing it this way because it's simpler, and the piece I had was only this big. I'm just trying to use scrap pieces for this. I didn't want to, I wanted to, I didn't want to try to get this to fit right, get this to fit right, get this to fit right. It was just uh, way too much work uh, for the amount of time I want to spend at it. So uh, I just decided I was going to make the corner piece first and then it's just a matter of square piece over on the end. I went ahead then and I cleaned everything up and I painted everything. It had, it had to be done anyway, because I had to paint the back side of this before I welded it. So I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to turn around and set that up there and weld that piece in place. So I went ahead and I welded that in, done the spot welds on that there. And then I went ahead and I cut out another piece. That'll just fit in there. And I'm going to go ahead now and fit that in there. I cut that to fit, because it's going to be hard to cut this in here after the fact. Like usually you just make a larger piece that'll come out to here and then you cut it off. But when you get in here close to the corner, you will find it hard. You can't cut this corner, so you've got to make that fit perfect in there. So all you gotta do is grind your welds here and finish your welds here. There it is, I gotta weld it in, nothing pretty. I'm gonna take the grinder now with a small stone and grind all that up. I got ahead of myself. You've often seen me turn around and say, weld it a piece and finish it. I never finished that piece off before I went onto that one. I'm here now just trying to get this all straightened away because this is stuff I wasn't expecting to get into, was all this. This is over and above making that panel. So I'm trying to get this all cleaned up. A lot of this here now you'll probably have to get it from the back side. I intend to flip this box upside down and tidy up everything underneath. You'll probably have to re-weld some of this stuff from underneath to make a nice edge on it and dress it because it is in the wheel well. But I'm just going to grind all this up now and get all this painted and get ready to put that whole panel in. There it is all grinded up, dressed up. Everything's ready to go, I just got to paint that. Now grinding this stuff here could get tricky because it's a crown panel and stuff like that. One of the tricks I've learned over the years, you got these big grinding discs, okay? And you, when it gets wore out so far, you end up throwing them out. I usually hold on them. And they get smaller. As they get smaller, you can put these in some tangly spots on this air grinder. You can actually go smaller than this again. I have some up there on the shelf. But that's all I did is I dressed up that corner there and rolled it. But I just took that on the, on the corner like that. And you can see when you change it, the angle of it, like this way here is not big enough, but when you change the angle, you can get it in tighter and then move it along there and grind on and off. This is the time now to finish all this before you go any further because once you weld the panel in, you're never going to get in there again because you'll have a panel to deal with. But that's done. Now all I got left to do now is paint that and then I can get ready and uh, mount the, the panel back in there. I got to mark it for the cross members. And then I gotta put spot weld uh, holes in it so I can get ready to weld it in. See, I got all the spot welds all drilled out and poked out and whatever. All I used was the old hole punch tool I got. 
I bought this at Princess Auto a number of years ago and uh, you know it sticks a bit whatever but it still works good and uh, drilling spot wells I use a 1 8 bit first Draw it, drills a pile of hole and then I use the step drill I find the 1 8 drill on the end of them wears out fast and it's not as sharp as what a, a 1 8 bit is and that's all I've ever done I've gotten into the habit of drilling all holes first 1 8 and then upsizing it to either a step drill or a drill bit I just find it faster Okay, I went ahead, I got a fit in place, and I started to weld it in, and I said to myself, hang on, now I've got some things I want to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of you have talked about weld through primers, okay? I've used them in the past. First of all, they are not cheap, and you will use a lot of it. Uh, and second of all, that uh, it always interferes with your welds, okay? So... Uh, I've just come to start using just a simple uh, rust paint, just something that I can spray on it to cover it, give it a couple of coats, weld it in. Now, you got the same problem with the weld through primers, what I'm going to have here. Any time that you have a painted surface like this, the weld through primer is the same problem as well. You got to turn around and clean off this area here where you're welding. Now, if you've seen me in past videos, I mark them all and grind them off. Uh, a number of you guys pointed out a quick and cool little tip, and I'm using it here today. Uh, all I did is I have a number of these drill bits in my box, okay? This same drill bit here, and you can see the top of that drill bit, the way it's shaped. All I did, all I did is I cut the top of the bit off straight. See, cut it off flat. So then you can come over here to your spot weld. Lay it in place. And now all the paint is removed. Now I went with a smaller bit than the spot well holes. If you look at this here bit, you can see that that fits in there and it's a bit smaller. I figured if you went with a larger bit or a bit the same size, you'll just end up making the hole bigger. And I just moved it around to grind it all off. I think that was a very cool tip. A number of you pointed that out. Because a lot of you have come across the same problem over the years. So I can thank you guys. I learn from you just as much as you can learn from me. Now, second of all, when it comes to plug welding, there's a number of different ways fellas do it, okay? I got my plug, started my plug welds here. This is basically what we're talking about, okay? Is a, is a plug well hole. Now all I did is I made a bigger here, drew two circles to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to use the marker as my welder. Some fellas like to start here, okay? And weld here and then come out to the side and then weld to the sides like this here. Uh, I found sometimes you end up putting a big knob of weld in the middle of it and then you can't get a good penetration in it. How I have always welded my spot welds is I've always started out here on the side and I weld my spot welds around the outside like this. That's how I've always welded them. And I've always ended up with a low spot in the middle, which I don't mind, and I have to weld it up in the middle, right? But that's basically, that's two different ways fellas do it. Uh, both ways work. I prefer this way here because I've always got penetration here. This one here, I found that if you, if you put too much of a weld here in the middle, you're not getting the penetration out here because your heat is being blocked by the blob of weld that you got put here. So I just like doing it this way here and working my way around the weld. Figured I'd point that out. A number of you have asked about spot welding, and that's uh, how I do them. Uh, another little thing, I found these Milwaukee markers. I'm telling you, they are unbelievable. I've, I left one of them out for about four hours on the bench like that, and come back, and it was like that. This marker now, I've been using this marker now over a week, and I've been using those old cheap dollar store markers, and I might get two days out of them, and that's it. I bought four or five of these a while ago. They're not cheap. I think they're like three or four bucks each. But uh, I said, shag it, I'm gonna try a good marker. And uh, well, I bought one, tried it, and I went and bought a couple more. But I got other ones sat here on top of my box. Just sat there waiting. There's the old ones I used before. Look. They're junk. But I got these ones here. And I bought the wide one. Great for marking stuff off, right? But they're, uh, they're great markers. Uh, you can buy them any Milwaukee dealer. It's the best marker I've come across yet. Anyway, let's get back to welding.
So I got it all welded in. I showed you a slow process of actually showing how to spot welds. I, how I do my spot welds. Fellas do it different than me. Uh, let me know in the comments how you guys do your spot welds. It'd be interesting and reasoning why you do it. Um, I, you know, I love learning new stuff. But anyway, I got it all welded in place. Now it's time to grind it all up. Um, usually what I've been using most of the times here lately is I've been really digging these uh, 24 grit uh, discs that I got here. I picked these up a while ago. And they were Norton 24 orange ones. And they're really good. But the problem you got is trying to get in here. They're kind of hard to get into. Uh, a hard stone is better for that again. Uh, like, you know, one of these. Now it takes a while to cut it down with a stone. And it, but you've seen me talk about these before. Walter Flex Cuts. Mm, where is the part number? There it is. I've had to make a mistake a few times of putting the wrong part number in there. But it's a Walter Flex Cut. Uh, I find they cut faster and they're not as harsh. You don't uh, dig into the metal like a stone do. And so now I'll use this here and I'll go around, I'll do all my spot welds because I can hold this on an angle like this here and then just cut the top on it there. These here are a bit flexible. They're great for when you can hold a flat, but if you got to hold them on an angle, uh, it gets a bit tricky to use. So, and uh, I'll just use the flex cuts for doing the, the welds. There it is. All grinded up. It's all ready to go there now, that one there is, finished up. All I did is I grinded them off, I used the uh, flex cut wheel and most of it. And in the corners and hard to reach areas, I went and used the smaller stone. And then I went back afterwards and just dressed it up with the 24 grit on the air grinder, just to smoothen it out a bit. But uh, here it is. It's not a very complicated panel to make. Um, a little bit of time has to go into capping the ends and doing everything, but as you can see, like I made this out of multiple pieces, the end of it here, that little lip on the end of it just adds to it. You could have ended that there if you wanted to, but and moved it back, but it's just that little detail there because it's like it's from the factory. If you look at it, in the factory it's got a little lip on the end of it, so it'd be nice to uh, duplicate that again. And of course the roll edges on it going up along there and the nice consistency of the two beads, using that piece of steel to cut it all out. And uh, the overlap, rounding off little corners, very little subtle things that you can do. Right, because that's the way the panels were. I round them off just a very slight bit, that I have them sharp or square. Right? Hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Uh, check out my merchandise. Uh, link is in the description underneath the video. That's a box pan section made. A lot of you've asked about that. Anyway, that's it for this one. Hope the tips were good, and until next time.